and uh, we're going to do a product demo for American Journey watercolors, which I have used for years and I find them to be the highest quality and some of the best watercolors that I've ever used. What I'm going to demonstrate with them is feathers. On uh, We've got a hummingbird here and just kind of show you how they work, but I find them to be incredibly um, uh, uh, vibrant with the colors. Um, they're light fast. They, uh, they, they have their wonderful consistency that actually um, uh, blends well with, with the other colors and, um, and I just really enjoy uh, the ease uh, that it takes really to put them on. What I want to do here is just, uh, I've got a hummingbird all sketched out. I'm just going to take the poppy, I've got a poppy color here, and this is a very bright, wonderful kind of, uh, got some nice yellow. In, in the red, so and it would more accurately state what we've got here in the, going in the in the throat area of the hummingbird, but the feathers you just have to follow the uh, the contour of the of the animal when you do the feathers, and so just very briefly, you have the the hummingbird here. Basically, what my stroke is going to be what the feather shape actually is. You can see how brilliant this color lies in. I've just got a little bit of water here mixed in. And this will give me enough brilliance that I can mute it down, wet it with watercolor if I need to. I can also add other colors to it. And the, um, it will still have the same intensity. And that's really important with watercolors because when you are blending it with, um, with water, um, it will reduce the intensity sometimes, and I find that the American Journey watercolors really hold their own up against any of the others that I've tried before. Um, the feathers of a, we've got the hummingbird neck, the feathers hold very closely to the neck, um, and of course they're very luminescent, and so this just kind of gives you an idea of how you can make that luminescence come to life using these watercolors uh, and it just really makes such a difference in what you're what you're doing and it's a pleasure to work with something a product that really does what it's supposed to do because it's just less for you to have to think about as you can see I've got the feathers here on the neck and I'm just going to model in kind of shape this neck area and we've still got, it's a poppy color that I have, and it's still very bright. Just going to kind of model in around there. A little bit of water. And the more dark, I'll put a little bit of dark on the corner there, and that really will make everything pop a little bit more. You can sense that's in the, in the shadow area there. And hummingbirds are so wonderful and colorful and move around so much. Just get a little bit more of the dark, kind of indicate around where the feather is actually not connected to the actual body of the bird. So the feather has, it's got, a, it's got the main, uh, the main uh, a bone of the feather that actually grows out from the bird and then the barbules and the, and the other uh, elements of the feather kind of splay out from that point, depending on what kind of bird it is, whether the splay is bigger or smaller. And so you've got the, the brightness of this. And what I'm going to actually do is put another layer. And that's another thing about the um, watercolor, American Journey watercolors, is that they glaze very well. It takes a watercolor with a lot of pigment ability to make a good glaze. And um, these watercolors will do that very well. Then we've got some spring green here. I believe I've already got spring green on my palette. And we just kind of model in around. And I've just taken the full strength spring green and I'm going to model in around the eye. Normally when I'm painting birds or animals I will paint the eye first. But this is just a little demonstration on how to do feathers. Got a little pixelation from the camera. 
that, uh, or the printer where this was done, but that's okay. It's still basically the same thing. You've got your shadow area here, and then you just have to, where the dark area is, is around the part of the feather that is not connected to the body of the bird. So, so, and that's going to have a more of a distinguishing outline than the other parts. And so we'll just kind of get a modeling of the rest of the dark. And then you can kind of see how it all comes in together. But, and also, a lot of times I will use a titanium white to, uh, to further uh, exemplify the edges of the feather. Going to kind of really kind of work to get a little bit darker here just to give you a little bit more of an idea of the shading of the shape. But, um, but I go back in here t with the spring green and then pick up some of the titanium white and show you how you can get some more of the spring green. And just see it, just the spring green, the colors just really hold up. So you just want to kind of go around the outside edge of the feather. And the feather shape is going to be like this. That's kind of how they grow. So you're going to have, let's see, I want to make sure I don't have that too terribly wet. And you can just drop the color in, and it's still very intense. I can even do it over the darks the shadow areas. And then of course with a hummingbird you've got the contrast of the greens and the reds which are natural complementary colors. Um, so that really kind of adds to the effect that you're going to get there. Then you can start painting in the rest of, of the bird but basically um, you're, with the colors, when you have this iridescence, you're going to have more of an awareness of, of the feathers um, individually. Because in this part of the bird, where it's so dark, it's not going to be quite as obvious because the feathers are going to be very small and very tight in, in this, on the head of this hummingbird. But where they're iridescent, then they're going to become way more obvious. And so you can just kind of blend that in a little bit. And as I say, we're just working on the feathers up here. And then we'll, we can go in with a little bit darker. Got to have your darks in there. And you can just kind of give us even more of, a, of an idea of how those feathers actually are configured on the bird. And using a good product is something that is so important because it will save you a lot of stress in trying to make something create a, an effect that's just not going to do it because it doesn't have the, the ability. So you live and learn, but, but if you can have someone give you a little bit of a heads up on what the best products are to get, the, the best value for, for your money, your time, for the quality of the project, product is American Journey. So, just, just, just kind of to give you an idea of how that would be. Put a few little indications on the, the head, around the edge, the top edge of the feathers. Um, just sort of like so. Then you can blend that in a little bit. And then you kind of see how you're starting to to get the feel of, of what the ruby-throated hummingbird, um, what the head would be like. And, and you're still getting that richness of the of the red in the in the throat because that's where the name comes from but this just gives you an idea of of how you can lay if you've got a really good product 
um, that has a lot of consistency and it has a lot of body in it. And it has the ability to be thinned out with water or to be used just as on its own. It mixes well and, um, and it gives you the effect that you're going to look for uh, whether you're doing feathers on a very small hummingbird or if you're doing the larger um, uh, feathers, uh, wing feathers of, a, of a, something like a, a hawk or an eagle. And so American Journey, that's the watercolor to use.